Hi, I'm Mark from Platinum Melody Grow Lights, and welcome to the Battle of the Knockoffs. What we're going to do today is compare five different LED grow lights, all with around the same wattage draw, and we're going to test the actual output, the actual spectral efficiency output, and see what we're really dealing with. We have some that use three watt LEDs, some that use cob LEDs, some that even use 10 watt LEDs. What we're going to show is that there's simply no substitute for professional quality LED grow lights, regardless of the equipment used, the wattage draw. We need to look at the par value, the spectral efficiency. That's what grows plants. What we've also noticed over the years is an alarming trend. Since we first started creating LED grow lights back in 2010, we've noticed that people have started overstating simply their values. We have some lights now that claim to be up to a thousand watt light, 600 watt light, 450 watt light, but what are they actually putting out? You as a consumer need to know this. You need to look at the actual output, and that's what we're gonna to show today. While limitation may be the highest form of flattery, there's a huge difference in equipment. Let's take a look at the competitors. First, we have the Vipar Spectra V450 using 150 three watt diodes, claiming to be a 450 watt light, but we tested around 200 watts. Second, we have the Bespa 600 watt light using 60 10 watt diodes, it actually tested around 126 watts. Third, we have the King Plus 1000 watt light using 100 10 watt diodes, actually tested out at 172 watts. Fourth, we have the a CXA 370 Cree Cobb base light, claiming to be a 400 watt light, tested out right around 107 watts of consumption. Lastly, we have our gold standard P300 using around 185 watts using 100 3 watt diodes. We're gonna compare all of these today and see what they're actually putting out. So let's go. Our first contender in the battle is the Cobb Cree based LED grow light. This uses twin 200 watt Cree CXA 3070 LED clusters. This light is advertised as a 400 watt light, but let's test the actual wattage draw. This hits at about 105 watts. This is putting out about 670 PPFD. Now, why so high for such a low wattage draw? Well, let's take a spectral analysis. Using our MK350, we can take a fresh hit. Now, you'll note the high amount of green. PAR is not weighted, meaning it takes all the photons of light, adds it up together, and gives one number. This is showing very high because it's very high in green, exactly what plants aren't even using. So even though it might have a slightly elevated PAR for its low wattage value, it's extremely inefficient. This means that the light actually being absorbed by the plants is very low. Overall efficiency, low. Output, low. Next up, we have our King Plus light using 110 watt diodes. Now this light claims itself to be a thousand watt light. Yes, yeah, in the literature it claims it only draws around 185 watts. What we found, it's actually pulling about 171 watts. And look at the actual PPFD value. We're not even hitting 400. We're right around 395. If we have spectral output, we'll see that this one is a little bit more efficient than the other one, but still not a whole lot going on. Overall, extremely weak, even for the power that's drawing. Nowhere near a thousand watt. Not sure where this planet came from, but it's definitely not ours. Next, we have the Bespa 600 watt claim light. This light uses 60 10 watt diodes. But what is it actually pulling out of the wall? And what's it putting out in terms of par PPFD? Well, we tested it and we've got a live shot of about 124 watts and a par count of about mm, just under 600 U moles. So as you can see, definitely less than a 600 watt light. Now, what is it putting out for spectral analysis? Eh, not too bad, but again, very low par, very weak. In fact, both of the 10 watt lights that we tested here, both the King and the Bespa, were some of the lowest par lights for the actual watts that they consumed. Thus, you can see the higher the wattage does not mean an actual higher output. It's simply a marketing gimmick. Next up, we have the Vipar Spectra V450 using 153 watt diodes. Now, what's it pulling from the wall and what's it putting out? Well, we test this light and we found that it's actually using the most amount of power of any other light here, but yet putting out only about 630 U moles. What's it hitting for an actual spectral analysis? Well, we tested and we found it's extremely yellow and green heavy. And remember, PAR is not weighted. So that even with this number of par, it's still got a lot of unusable light in it, plus using more power than any other light here. Last but definitely not least, we have the Platinum LED P300. Now the P300 uses 103 watt diodes, 
and let's see what it's physically pulling from the wall and what it's putting out in terms of PAR PPFD. The P300 uses around 176 watts, but yet puts out almost 1100 U-moles at 18 inches. Thus, as you can see, it's almost two to three times as much as any of these lights here. Some lights even using more power than our light. What's the spectral analysis say? As you can see, thanks to perfected narrow band based spectrum, we include everything from ultraviolet all the way through the infrared region, thus giving the most efficient spectral output along with the highest PAR value. This in turn equals the most powerful LED grow light on the market today. So remember, there simply is no replacement for professional quality LED grow lights. Just because a light may seem cheaper, may seem high wattage, it actually means much to the contrary. It means subpar performance, inferior output, only costing you money down the long run. Spend the money wisely, yield the benefits. To learn more about our P300 as well as the rest of our professional series lights, please come to our website at PlatinumGrowLights.com. Thanks so much.